Not a glorious day in Elysium. Charging forward. Charging right in. Uh, things we found out last time, we we pursued, pursued the ruby lead a bit more. Um, we are clo closer to finding her than before. Um, left the village and went up the coast. Okay, go eat. <laughs> um, we're going to bring Gart a bird, I guess. Here was, here was a thing that I could have, uh, could have done a considerably long time ago, and that is call and tell my station, like, I have amnesia. <laughs> the game might have been very different had I done that on Monday immediately, but I, I never actually, like, spoke to Kim to the extent that he was like, you should tell them. <clears throat> Oh, I can also do this. It's Thursday. So, yeah. So, I should be... Alright, we're going to use the phone a bit. Either that or... Or go arrest Classy first. Because that's... That's the thing. Like... At the, the last time I talked to her, I was like, okay... You're under arrest. Like we decided, you're you're going to the station. She after after she was sure that we were going, we were really going to arrest her. She's like, okay, okay, okay. Here's what happened, you know, and started to divulge information. And then I felt like, okay, well, don't arrest her now because she did like volunteer information, sort of like in exchange for not being arrested. And I was like, oh, okay, it's good information. But we found out that it's not good information. So this is the first thing we should go do. Um, what are you guys doing? That's one brutal motor carriage. <laughs> they blurred it out on his shirt as well. If I were a real skull right now, I'd jack it, paint it in palm tree livery. Then bottom light it, neon style. <laughs> Snazzy shit ripped Skull Mobile like this would make a fine trophy. Skull Mobile? We could, like, hang fucking shrunken heads from the side mirrors. Cobb's heads, scary tribal shit. Yeah, tribal shit. A cop carriage like this would have proper skull value. I feel like these are the first guys we've seen who've had an American accent. <laughs> well, I appreciate the interest you take in my brutal motor carriage. I have to stop you right there. The RCM takes threats directed at its property seriously. I, um, it's just theoretical work, Copper. No basis in reality. Man, we're certified skulls right now. Skulls. Now there's a strong organizational title. I can tell you who we're not, Cop. We're not snitches or skulls. Which is not to say that the skulls are bitches in On the contrary, the part of the presentation you want to take home with you, cop man, is we're not part of the skulls yet. Okay then, let's indulge in some intellectual exchange. These men seem eager to share their beliefs. You know Cindy the skull? The young man's gl eyes glaze over as he remarks in a voice filled with longing, Oh yeah, Cindy's a right proper skull. Yeah, the other guy lights up too. A true artist of the future, just like Arno Van Eyck. By the way, if you see Cindy, give her our regards, he adds, returning from whatever void he was just visiting. For all the, their nihilistic pro posturing, these young men are not lacking in youthful idealism. Your rhetoric is confusing. Are you a part of the Skulls or not? We're not franchised Skulls. Well, not yet. Once we get our name out there, we'll have a chance to join them. What makes you think they would accept you? Because we can be just as psycho and vicious. You'll see. Oh, you'll see for sure once we're in. It's the last thing you'll ever see before the void consumes you. You're under arrest! You sure a Skull would say that? Uh... 
Well, yeah, I mean, we're only saying practice things for now, so we don't mean no harm to the Skulls brand, or to you. <laughs> this is definitely something the Skulls would say, but we're not trying to encroach on the Skulls brand in any way. On the contrary, we're just here to market it. Why does a criminal gang need marketing? Think of it more like two franchises merging, you know? Us two and the Skulls. I really feel like we would add more to the table. Spice things up here in Martinez, you know, get the old machine of pain and suffering oiled up real good. Doesn't it already have enough spice? There can always be more. In the end, it won't matter. Until then. So you're just pretending to be as nasty and vicious as the Skulls. Hey, we can be hard, like pavement on top of pavement. Or a brick on top of another brick. Held together with flex seal. Or a grave on top of a grave. The kids have the vocabulary, but I might be missing a brain. Wouldn't a grave on top of a grave just be a big hole? It's hard about holes. <laughs> And then modern dance music? Oh, yeah! He exclaims, then stops himself, processing the rest of your question. <laughs> We're not fucking kids, man. Beware of the abyss. Why? It's a threat. An impotent threat of violence. A threat? Good, I like those. But I don't. In fact, I dislike them so much, I'm willing to drag you boys back to the station just to calm myself down. Hey, oh, there's no need for that. We're just talking here. Joking, too. Stay late, man. Didn't you have some questions about skulls or some shit? The Union does their share of policing in Martinez, at least where gangs are concerned. That's why there isn't much organized crime around here. Except the Union. <laughs> Espirit de Corps was quick. To, to jump in with that. Apart from the union themselves, of course. Don't you worry about that. We're going to make up for the deficit. Yeah, we are. Who are the Skulls? You don't know. What kind of cop are you? Not a question. Don't get into it. Just testing you, boys. The Skulls are the most vicious gang... Yo, yo! Hey, Hank. The Skulls are the most vicious gang of the Bespertine. His voice rings with excitement. Bespertine, or the Bes Besmerti, the Immortals, are West Revisholian crime syndicates. The nastiest bunch of psychos ever, jacking car carriages and getting into high-speed chases, possessing an Infinite amount of fuck all swagger, infamous for their nonverbal modus operandi. If a skull spots you, he will pull out his dagger and stab you without say saying a word. The lieutenant's voice is as calm as usual, a testament to the violence and death he's witnessed through the sight of his firearm. They usually occupy the burnt out quarter in Jamrock, or you can find them loitering around their brightly painted bottom lighted vehicles. Man, I can't wait to become a skull. Bottom lights are wretched aggressive. You know anything about the murder? Murder? A man was hanged. Oh, arresting. Yeah, I'll have to. I definitely won't arrest them every playthrough. <laughs> it's one of the. Like, when I played through, like, Mass Effect. I, right, I played through the Mass Effect series, and that's something where you can miss a lot of things depending on your decisions, but I don't think when I was playing through it, I was like, I'm going to play through this again, like, and make different choices. I was just, I appreciated that the other choices were there, but didn't really care that much to see them. Here, I want to see them. <laughs> so I will, later. <clears throat> it was a man. Also, he was hanged. Don't fuck around. I'm, I'm, am? Typo. He's hanged from a tree. I mean, uh, these punks don't know anything. Let's move along. Hey, stop right there. How does one know anything? Uh, this sounds like epistemology. A field so occupied by thought that it begins to question thought itself. However, there is no way these young men could possibly be aware of her work. I know you don't know shit. <laughs> How can one know sh shit? For example, how can one be sure that there is truly a body hanging behind the hostel? What if it's art, or just a mere specter? Maybe it's true. The hanged man is merely a prop in a performance. We are the audience, and the art artist is hiding somewhere in the dark. 
He is, though. He is a proper performance. He, it's a video game. Conceptualization, are you going to realize that we're in a video game? A brilliant work of art. <laughs> what? I got an achievement. Say five art cop lines. All right. Okay, before... All right, first, first we'll go make some phone calls. Then we're going up to arrest her immediately. Station 41's Lazarus. You hear a man clearing his throat briskly, then an answer. Gottlieb, what do you want? He's carelessly chewing on a piece of hard candy. I was told to call the Lazarus. People were worried about me. Oh, it's you. <laughs> Am I still going to call myself Firewalker? <laughs> no, I know my name. Although, uh... Did I have... I might have had a heart attack earlier. You survived it. Congratulations. Are you mobile? Yes. Even better. Anything else? I wouldn't worry about that. Orphans your age have coronary trouble all the time. Also, death is a natural part of life. Accept it. The body is an object, and objects break down. Do what good you can with yours before the rest goes, too. I've lost my memory. All of it. With all the drugs that you've been dealing... The damage you've been dealing yourself with drugs and alcohol? I'm not surprised. You're not surprised. Okay, anything else? What else? I'm not a brain doctor. Look on the bright side. You've got a whole new life now. Use it wisely. It's hard to say if he doesn't believe you or doesn't care. Doc, someone broke my heart. Getting pumped and dumped is not a disease. People live through it all the time. You should be happy for her. Do you know who this person was? Have I told you? You must have me confused for a close personal friend. I am not. I am a medical professional. <laughs> a medical professional with a constant idiot emergency on my hands. One needs tending to right now, he thinks, looking about the room. God, these apes. You hear someone whine in the background. My eye, Doc, my eye. Isn't there anything you can do for me? What, do you want me to do blood work for you again, just to tell you how bad things really are across the board? You want another rundown of everything collapsing inside your body? Yes, I want the truth. You want the real, honest-to-God truth. Stop drinking. Eat magnesium and vitamin D. Our station is not a retirement home. We don't have funds to deal with rock stars past their prime. And no, I don't want to hear a political commentary on the topic. In fact, I got work to do. Some idiot has glued his eyes, <laughs> eyelids shut with cyanoacrylate. It looks like Mac Torson. It's not fucking cryoacrylate. It's super glue, Doc. Cyanoacrylate is super glue. So is bismuth. Wow, all right, I got a bunch of experience just for calling him and getting nothing out of him. Did you find out anything more about the owner of the armored boots? No, oh no. I thought she would. Connect me to the, to the, uh, the library. Introduce you to the librarian. Connect me to the hall in two, one. You didn't even start from three? Man, she's in a hurry. Male librarian answers the call. How can I help you, officer? He sounds worried, yet ready to assist. This is how people get when the police call. I'm looking for any information you can provide on Billy Magine, a reader. Billy. Billy Magine, you said. Give me a moment. I'll have to check our database. Puts down the receiver. Yes, hello. Are you still there? You can hear him fiddle with the printout. I, I found Billy Magine's home address. Is that all right? No phone number, unfortunately. They're too poor to have a phone line. Home address is fine. Rue de saint Ghislaine, 33B, apartment number 20. It's in Martinez, I believe. Capeside Apartments, is, it says. That's all. That's where that smoker on the balcony lives. Do you have any other information? It says they returned their last book a few days ago, but I wasn't at work that day. You know someone who was? Marie? Covers the phone with his hand and yells into the room behind him. Marie, do you remember a reader named Billy Magine? They returned a, a Tybalt book the other day. Yes, it was my colleague Marie. She says it was Billy's husband who returned the book. He also asked for this 
new sci-fi release lose Radio City 87 but we don't have it yet you have a name now so Billy Machine is a woman not a man how did your colleague know it was her husband Marie knows Billy she's been working here longer than me sometimes her husband returns some books for her Okay, so if Billy, Billy's husband is the, the dead guy who returned a book for her and then went, went for a drink. Do you know the husband's name? Only knows my sight. Describe what the husband looks like. She said it was an older man. She's pretty sure he had a drink or two the last time she saw him. There we go. Marie is the real murderer. No. She wasn't paying any attention to that. Thank you, that's all for me. No other questions. Happy we could help. Goodbye, officer. Hmm. Alright, so we got a point we can spend here. Um on what? I I seem to like drama a lot. <laughs> But let me th let me think for a second. I also have been neglecting Inland Empire hardcore. Like I used to get a lot like nothing nothing good comes from Inland Empire piping up, but I should probably I don't know, maybe put a point on it or something. I like I really I like conceptualization I like drama encyclopedia it has a surprising sense of humor who do I want to hear from more often and who do I want to um, get more successes with as well So far, I've spent most of my points up here in intellect. Oh, there, there's lots of things that can be useful. No doubt about that. It's just... Um... I have a minus to hand out. What, what, uh... Oh, because I have a permanent minus to it right here from... from one of these. And logic. Yeah, this one's giving me a minus to logic. Yeah, may, I think I will spend a point to make up for hand-eye coordination being being down by one. I think those are also, like, some of the hand-eye coordination are uh, checks that you can't redo. Like, they just go, up. Oh, here's a surprise red check. Oh, we made it back. Oh, sweetie. I don't even know how to thank you for finding my husband and helping him out. I hope we haven't been too much trouble for you. I was just on my way while I was working the case. Here, I want you to have a small token of my gratitude. She hands you a thin ribbon held together by a silver bird skull. It's a tie. The pin is an antique. Quite special. The little silvery knob holding the tie together feels warm in your hands. It's the shape of an avian skull with eight eyes. You could ask her about this when you get the time. It's probably a cryptid. But the phasmid, it, of course, is more important. I couldn't possibly shower thanks on you as enthusiastically as my wife has. But I am grateful for your assistance, officer. 
tries to play it cool, remain professional, but uh, inside the man is itching for some news on those traps. I'm looking for a suspect. Have you seen a woman with red hair who seemed to be on the run? I'm afraid not, officer. I've been busy digging in the reeds for days, looking for signs of insect activity. I'm less interested in mammalian concerns, to be perfectly honest. I checked all the traps. Oh, good. Okay, and... And one of them was empty. Completely empty? Yes, there was nothing in the trap. No locusts, no phasmid. No locusts, but no phasmid either. That's not ideal, but... The empty one was the one at your campsite. Maybe this factors into it somehow? I definitely left that one stocked. Hmm. Right from the campsite. The old woman's face lights up. This just means the insul Indian phasmid is even more clever than we thought. Of course, more clever. Yes. The Phantasmodea picked off the locusts and escaped. This is good news. Though, we'll have to reconsider the design of the traps. Make them more secure. Another trip to the reeds. I'm not persuaded. Why don't you try convincing Morel his hypothesis is invalid? Thank you for the vote of no confidence, Gary. And officer, I appreciate your concern, but please leave this to the experts. Unless you have an alter alternative hypothesis you'd like to venture. Excuse me for getting emotional. This is a big deal for us. You've helped us twice now and brought some great news, too. My gratitude. And the gratitude of the Society Crypto Cryptozoologique de Revachol is yours. Heartfelt gratitude. But does it feel like closure? What really happened? Some kind of foul play might be afoot. Theft? Thank you. It's an honor. He says with a straight face. Then turns to you. We should probably turn to our main investigation. This has been refreshing, but helping cryptozoologists isn't really a priority for our organization, is it? The lieutenant looks out the window impatiently. Damn it, lieutenant, have you no intellectual curiosity? Ah, uh, uh, we know all about Kuno. Interfacing makes this an easy roll. Consider the way the empty trap was disturbed as though shaken, most likely the hands of a young person. Hands small enough to fit inside the trap, too. You should ask... You should... Oh, I should go ask him? I think a little hooligan called Kuno may have stolen the locusts. A little hooligan? But what would a child want with bugs? Oh, my dear Morel, you've been an old man for too long. Kids love to torment insects. Almost as... Almost... Almost as much as they love to torment old folks. I'll go talk to the little gremlin and see if anything comes up. Delinquents, my favorite. It doesn't sound like it's really his favorite. Oh, you've been such a dear to us. Please, let us know whatever you turn up. I have a feeling we're getting so close. Well, I see you've got all the help you need. I'll see you I'll see you tonight at my place. Let's play Suzerain tea. But no more field trips for me. He hasn't been particularly forthcoming before. He may well be hiding something. After he's left, it's too late. Really, Gary? We're getting somewhere here. I'd love to play Suzerainty, but... Lena, I'm sorry, but you're not getting anywhere. It was some kids. I know the little mutants around here. Leave anything out in the open and they'll steal it, even if it's bugs. Morel, it's been fun, really, but I need a bath, and I have deliveries to handle. When this tea is done, I gotta run. No, no, no need to apologize, Gary. You've been more than helpful. We'll have to take a rain check on that game of Su Suzerainty, though. We're going to follow this through. He keeps the language unemotional, but there is, but it's in, but it's in there. Disappointment. So this guy's going to leave? What can I get out of him first before he I does? I really owe you one for getting us out of those reeds, officer. Finally got all that soot out of my head. Name's Gary. Yellow man. I, I mean, officer. That's rude. <laughs> Yellow man. Might this be the owner of that mug you found in the trash? This is something to ask him about after a little probing first. Not a I lover like of the nature, great outdoors? Just not this bloody coast. It's mostly drunks and degenerates that come here. This man respects authority too much to see you for what you are. Pretend thou art a sober man. Nobody's perfect. Oh, I've been tempted. 
but someone has to stay strong for River Cool. River what? No, it's River Shoal. Say it right. If I'm gonna say it right, you have to say it right. Are you a cryptozoologist too? No, no. I help Morale with his research sometimes, and I've learned some things along the way, but I don't usually go in for picnics like this on my own. After all this time with Morel, he must have an opinion on cryptids. This could lead to a good one. Do you have a favorite? Oh yes, the burning rhino. Morel doubts he's real, but I don't much care, because I won't be the one looking for him out in Safraserai. What's a burning rhino? A rhinoceros that looks ordinary during the day, but burns brightly by night. Well, at least the males do. Why only the males? The flames are not just for a decoration. They're an integral part of the beast's mating behavior. How so? During the burning rhino's mating season, herds of male rhinos, all aflame, encircle herds of female rhinos, forming a fiery ring as they begin to copulate loudly. Local peasants call it the passion ring. They fear the rhinos, as perhaps they should. Anyway. It's clear the burning rhino is dear to him on many levels, some even spiritual. How do they burn? They have special ducts just above their shoulder blades where, that secrete a combustible fluid. When the rhino is just beginning to light itself, it looks as though it has wings of fire. How is it lit? How does the lighting work? The rhino starts running very fast... Starts running very fast to build heat, then stops, raises its head, and sparks fly from its neck, setting its back ablaze. This seems unlikely. <laughs> Ravishol used to be a flaming rhino once, a long time ago. That seems unlikely too, doesn't it? You know anything about the man? So that's what the RCM is in Martinez about. Great. He nods in sincere approval. Great to hear someone's finally taken care of that. So you do know something about it. No, no. <laughs> Nothing. He was some kind of mercenary, but everyone here knows that. I'm just glad to hear you're looking into it, that's all. He's not feeling very comfy in his clothes, is he? Strange. He didn't kill him or anything, but there's something going on here. Is this your mug? My mug? Why would you think that? His eyes widened at the sight of the mug. He's seen it before. Seemed as if you were calling out to it longingly when you cried, Yellow Man. Oh no, that's not... Why would I be calling to a broken mug? I'll say... Yeah, okay. Just admit it, man. You put the mug in the trash container behind the whirling. Maybe... Okay, yes I did. I know I shouldn't have. I am very sorry, officer. You're not going to find me, are you? <laughs> F find him for- oh, for- hmm. I mean, this would be a good way to get some money. I haven't find anybody yet. This man is guilty of a crime. Plus, he's a racist. I do want information, though. I'd rather have information than money. Whew, he's visibly relieved. Thank you, you won't regret this. I won't use another man's property to dump my garbage ever again. I don't know what got into me, really. Work has been stressful lately. Damn code... What? I've never seen that word before. Koichkos. Price dumping us out of competition. What did you do, Gary? Nothing. Nothing, just answering some questions. Helping out the law. How did you get into the trash container? I know a guy with Trash Collection Services, CS Municipal. He gave me a master key for the trash containers of Martinez. Why would you need to get into everyone's trash? So I can use the Whirling's trash compactor to store my own stuff, he says, bowing shamefully like a fallen knight. Garbage disposal is expensive as hell. The damn Hymeans run it like a mob. I'm sorry, okay? I thought I could cut costs. I shouldn't have. I shouldn't have disgraced myself. Disgraced? No need for the histrionics, sir. It was, after all, it was just a trash container. Did you put the clothes of a murder victim into that trash container? 
Officer, please. Let me explain. It's not like that. Do. <laughs> I was only cleaning up. I live right across the yard from where he was hanged, and I saw him stripped naked. All, his, all the clothes lying around the yard, smelling. People are animals, you know. Yes, yes. What happened? Then I came out to clean up the rags because no one else would. I put them in the Whirling's trash, along with a broken mug, admittedly. Okay, I was coming to throw the mug away. And, well, I threw the mug there and the clothes, too. Right, it was just civic duty. Exactly. That's what it was. Civic duty. What? As he shifts uncomfortably, a series of clicks, like the clinking of glass beads against one another as they roll across a hardwood floor. You've heard this sound before, but where? Don't mess with me. I think you know what I'm talking about. I haven't the slightest. There's lots of weird stuff out here in the re- Out- Out here in the reeds? <laughs> I think this was maybe a conversation I was supposed to have with him when he was out in the reeds. <laughs> That's funny. That's like the first thing they've messed up. In terms of, like, not accounting for the fact that I'm talking to him now and not then. Wind shifting in some garbage nearby. You wouldn't know anything about the victim's missing armor, would you? Armor? No. I mean, yes, of course, I know he was wearing armor, but I don't know anything about it. An infant could see he's not telling the truth, but he's too scared to admit wrongdoing. You should observe him more closely after this topic is concluded. You are surprised to see my colleague, Kitsuragi. Not many Sayolites are here, or anywhere other than Sayol. I meant no offense, truly. Do you remember when we met Measurehead and I said the next racist will be the really good one? Well, that is this is that racist. He, he is nothing compared to Measurehead. I don't know who that is, but all I meant is that there are not many Sailites around here. <laughs> what are they doing in that sail of theirs? Scheming? <laughs> The lieutenant is a native of Revishol. Oh yes, of course he is. I was just speaking about his connections. Let's change the subject, okay? Oh, what's the other thing I could have said? Are you Gary? Are you a racist? Do you have a problem with Sailite? No, not a problem at all. Okay, still nothing. More composure, and I shall try this check. Also, what was this very nice tie that they gave me? Inland Empire and Volition. A slender bolero tie held together by an antique clasp in the shape of a bird's skull. The skull features eight cavities for eyes. It's disturbing, but you can't look away. So what am I looking for? Composure? Am I wearing any minus composure things? I got plus one from the shoes. And since this guy's going away, like, I, I imagine he is carrying the armor on him. Or wearing it, maybe. Um, Alright, so nothing else. Yeah, I'll save the skill point so I can try retry this immediately. Very generous of you to help us out. I mean, officers... That shirt looks very uncomfortable on him. Oh, is it exactly what I needed? Rolled it, a, rolled a seven, and needed a seven. That shirt looks very uncomfortable on him. Look at the buttons, barely keeping that thing together, as if ready to rip out from underneath. Something worn underneath it, like a piece of ceramic armor, for example, one that makes a clinking sound when the plates meet each other, resembling pearls or marbles stolen from the corpse in the yard near where he lives. I see you're a connoisseur of high-quality combat gear. He freezes and sighs heavily. I knew you'd figured it out, officer. I'm sorry I didn't tell you at once. I was 
You're going to jail, just like this guy. You see the gleaming white ceramic shine underneath. A thin layer of interlocking plates covers his gaunt torso. I was ashamed of what I did, and I didn't want you to know. Not detecting falsehoods, sire. He's gearing up to admit the truth. This shame is surprisingly sincere. Gary, what's going on? I took the hangman's cuirass. I, I didn't mean to. God damn it, Gary. I, I know. Shame on you! Give the cuirass to the an to the officer at once. The woman looks at you, her eyes soft and pleading. Gary didn't mean to interfere with your investigation, officers. He's just thick-headed and poor as dirt. But he's always helped us, given us a place to stay. And he's followed Morel into God knows what jungles. Why did you lie to me, Gary? Because I was weak. I should have told you the moment I saw you, but he's a scaredy cat. Why did you really put those clothes in the trash? Everyone was picking those pieces off him, and I was watching them do it, and they scattered his clothes all over the yard. Everything was smelling. So I went there to take out my trash and started cleaning up. All those rags on the ground, him swinging up there, and... I had a lapse of honor, sir. I thought, he's a foreigner. They all say he wasn't from here. Only the cuirass was left, so I stripped it off him. It was early in the morning. No one saw me. I took it with me. It was a mistake. Had I known it'd give you guys trouble, I wouldn't have. Fuck. It's okay. It was a loose end, and you're tying it up now. I'm so fucking sorry I called you Yellow Man, he says, silent. he says silently. Sailite officers commanded the suzerain's navy. Most of them sided with the king when... They were thoroughly conservative men, he realizes suddenly. It's difficult to say what the lieutenant thinks of his of this historic apology. His faith his face does not belie emotions. Do you know who killed the hanged man? I always thought it was the Union. Some Union hard asses lynched him because of the strike, but almost everyone in town knows that. I wish I could tell you more. This is all he knows. Give me that armor. A cuirass that matches the dead man's boots comes into view. Soon it is in your hands, smelling of his sweat. So, so light to hold. Like a bag of cotton. Yes, I will never do anything like this again. Thank you for your cooperation. Strange. I, like, I had the option to fine him for illegally using the the store's garbage dump, but not for tampering with a crime scene and stealing for, off of a corpse? Alright. Let's... Hmm. We're finally going to arrest her. Two points of logic ain't bad. Ah, uh, my perception is really low. We can't have that. It's these dang glasses. Ah, uh, but they're good glasses. Encyclopedia? Two points of encyclopedia? I'm all over it. Can I get the whole found outfit? I guess I probably can. What else is giving me my... Oh, oh, that it. Okay, so both of these are giving minus one perception, which is probably fine, right? I have lots of perception. It's probably fine. Okay. Also, I don't know if I have the option to just walk up to her and arrest her now. We'll see. Officer, what brings you up here in the rain? Can you tell us more about the victim? 
like for example his name actually officer I didn't know his name I just called him Lely a nickname I guess he came from Lelystad it's short for that and it was his army name apparently he said his real name wasn't his I tried to pry it out of him but it was no use Lelystad that's a good start the lieutenant writes it down in his notebook then tears out a page and hands it to you we have a few questions you can help us with a few things a field autopsy alone can't answer the young woman cranes her neck trying to catch a glimpse of the page the lieutenant passed you on it is a list of autopsy observations recorded neatly in blue ink the last missing pieces of a puzzle of flesh where is lelystad the place i mean in Aranye, officer, it's a, I think, municipality is the term. A nowhere, a nowhere town there. The Lelystad municipality has few boroughs and even fewer cities. It's made of agricultural plots near the border of Gotwald. Executive summary, cows, silos, and wheat. Aranye? Aranye's map of waterways? This fits with the tattoo. You are almost right, officer. <clears throat> Shakes his head like you just missed a shot in darts. That means his race was Occidental, not Mondial. I'll update the form. You were both from Oranye? Yes, we were compatriots. Did that bring you together? No, he was too old for that. And from another part of or Oranye... <laughs> I didn't even understand his accent. What brought us together wasn't Oranye. It was bad habits. No love for Mother Oranye? But wasn't he a soldier? Could be worth pursuing. Military man, but not a patriot? No, he left the National Service after they taught him after they taught him to do what he did on Seminine. He wasn't the flag waving kind. He was the making money killing people kind. He was by no means a stupid man. She takes a long drag of her cigarette and washes it down with a bottle of Pepsi. A people person, a small platoon leader, certainly not a patriot. Didn't his lack of patriotism annoy you? No, there's nothing on Mundi. The old, old world is dead, and we both knew it. Come to think of it, maybe Aranya did bring us together. In loathing? They're from a kingdom of loathing. Ha ha. I love Revishal. I hope she loves me too. How old was he? He was 42. 42? Are you sure? I would have had him above 50. He had many scars that made him appear older, but no. We even celebrated his birthday, like some weeks ago. It was a funny two days. He had little reason to lie to me. Looks like you were right, officer. Taps on his notebook once, as though assigning some kind of point. <laughs> Points are good. Have one, you old dog, before we all die. I didn't know this was a competition, Kim. <laughs> it isn't. Police work is a cooperative sport. This is clearly sports for him. Something like archery or darts. It's still about getting hits, right? And not missing. It's too pinball for me. I just like to get autopsies right on the first try. Where were we? He's lying. <laughs> <laughs> Eye color. Blue. Light blue. They were like, like little blue galaxies, you know? It was strange seeing those eyes in his fucked up face. Pardon the swearing. I do him an injustice. He wasn't ugly, and he had a beautiful, soft voice. Very surprising, what with all the scarring. It was quite something, watching him speak. He had a combat wound on his chin and mouth. Yes, severe. She seems to enjoy the word. It made him look like half his face was cracking away in some strange smile. That and those eyes. Oh, yes. His hair, if you can remember. It was light brown, almost blonde. He darkened it with brillantine. Brilliantine. Made it oily. Not nice to stroke. I couldn't commit. <laughs> I, I too have stroked his hair. <laughs> I said to put Brillantine on the form. Do I get a point? No. But I put it down. There. Okay, sure. Here you go. <laughs> I didn't automatically get the experience. I had to ask for it. I had to be like, hey, hey, I said Brillantine. Can I have five experience? And he's like, no. I'm like, but I said Brillantine. He's like, okay, here's five experience. <laughs> Welcome back, Serp. It's autopsy part two. 
We're checking our answers with Classier, and then we're going to arrest her, if they let me. He had a tattoo. What did it mean? Oh, that. It was a map of his service history? Sure, service history. It was mostly for showing off to chicks, though. How so? How? Imagine him lying in, back, in bed, freakish musculature laid out on the sheets. Scarred, of course. Tattooed. The sheets are dirty for some reason. <laughs> Is this Oranyi's lit? Because <laughs> that's her, her, that was her major. I won't interrupt. He's smoking and drinking, of course, and his chest and shoulders and arms are studded with stars. Tens, hundreds of them, maybe even thousands. And the woman goes like... She points at the air with her sharp-nailed finger, picking out an imaginary tattoo star. What was this, baby? And he says, That was too hardcore. Don't ask me about that. And she goes, Okay, but what's this, baby? And he's like, Saw some bad shit there. Killed some loincloths. And so it goes, star after star, port after port, third world country after third world country. And he's done horrible things in every single one of them. Oh, hey, Garrett. <laughs> you were the woman in this? Oh, yeah. Can you tell us precisely what these mean? No, thank you. Or, oh, no thank you. I've seen enough of him dead. I can tell you what they meant without looking at them. He was a blue-eyed boy with thick arms from a small town. He was also poor, and the government of Aranya needed some people killed, so they turned him into a grotesque killer for money. He went to Killer Academy in Vredefort. Then he killed some people on the Seminine Islands. And on other islands, too. All of the islands. After this, he came to Revishal and got killed himself. Thank you for clearing that up. Toxicology report. A real rainbow splattering of pharmaceuticals, I bet. Barbiturates? Amphetamine? Sildenafil? How much does that toxicology report cost the police of Revishal? I can do it for half of that. Save you some money. Make some myself. It's quite expensive, miss, but we'll manage without your help for now. All right. Pours herself more coffee. She ain't gonna have time to drink it, because she's going downtown. We found your buoy. It was empty. Just seawater. Oh. Did you take the documents? He's trying to throw her off with the bluntness of the question. No, of course not. As I said, it would have been too risky for me to use those documents anyway. My employer gave them to me. In truth, I should have destroyed them. Theft of some kind? Thank you, but actually, now that I think about it, you mentioned seawater. I was worried I'd been too careless with the latch mechanism. The documents were probably just washed away. You. You're a dang liar. All these lies. Lies I... She repeats, then trails off. It's unclear what she intended to say. Let's talk about you and Ruby again. No, where was the... Why do you think it was her? Is this where we can say... We know that she's not a crazy drunk? This is just sensationalism and guesses. I know what it sounds like. That's why I didn't want to tell you before. But she knew what had happened when I came downstairs. Somehow she knew Lily was dead. She wasn't surprised at all. When we came up here, she was calm as a stone, too. She cleaned it all up like she had a plan. Could it be that Ruby was cleaning up after herself? That the lynching was a cover-up for her? It's ominous. You buying into her theory and running, in <laughs> and running with it. Careful with this logic guy. There may be grounds here, at least for an extended detention. Whoops. Wait. I clicked the wrong thing. If I say d how how do I how do I arrest her then? There may be grounds here. Is that something I can do from What's this? Wait, stop. That man, bloated beyond all recognition, was 42? 
That's what she said, yes. Below the damage, the weeks of decomposition, all the swollen indignity of mortality. He was 42 years old. Where is this going? How old are you? That's where this is going. 45,000 liters of raw alcohol has left its disfigurements. What lies beneath, you wonder? I got this. I got this. My age. I think I'm... <laughs> oh, my 30s. A rough 30. I lived it up. You're a rough rider, but not in your early 30s. Do you want to know the truth? I'm not afraid of the truth. To the laboratory. <laughs> I have a thought about what my date of birth is. Your face looks like it's 58 and your body feels like it's 60. Your mind feels like it's lived for one day or a hundred. Both longer than they ought to be, the day and the century. But for how long, then? Oh, but for how long, then? Has this thing attached to your sentience walked the planet's crust? Time to start racking those brains of yours, Elder One. When and where were you born? I kind of want that. Was there something that I wanted to forget? This one seems kind of lame, but I th I feel like maybe it fits with his character, so I'm not going to forget that one. And that one's giving me at least a thingy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Now think about how old I am. So it doesn't look like I can just use the 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 ledger to arbitrarily what do you call it? Officer. It's a fine day for questions. Why do I feel like you've won here? I don't feel like I've won. I feel like shit. This turned out well for you. You slipped past all suspicions. Clearly, I haven't. We're having this conversation. We're having this conversation, aren't we? How well could it have gone? I mean, I'm stuck in Martinace, just like all of us. I've been up here for I don't know how long. I like to call this my rooftop containment facility. Something seems off with this theory I've developed about Ruby. It all seems fortuitous for you. Dried flowers on the roof? The what? Oh, those ones. I don't know, sir. I said I have no idea what to make of them. Honestly, I think they're just trash. There's no reason for me to think they're somehow connected with her. What are you contained for, then? For my sins, of course. The long-standing sins of a bad, frivolous person. For destroying my first love. For working with... For bad people. The list goes on and on. There's suddenly a strange glint in her eyes. Not malicious, but dangerous. Yes? Ah, it's annoying! We had the ability to, uh, just drag her- like... Officer. The- the option is gone. Unless it's buried somewhere. Oh, 
what? Why would I put myself through this insanity? Get myself cornered like this? He wouldn't have died if it weren't for me. I know that, but I would never hurt him. He was a serviceman. He must have had a gun lying around, close to her hand. A military weapon using jacketed ammunition. Now you guys suddenly have theories pouring out? When they're obviously just stabs in the dark. Downstairs people have this crazy idea that you killed him. I'm sad to say that. They must have said it in some fit of frustration or pressure. They couldn't have meant it. I've talked to them after it happened. No one has implicated me. He must have had a, we a weapon. He must have had a weapon nearby. Did you use that? No. I specifically asked him not to carry firearms when he was with me. He only had his stupid armor. Yeah, I guess. But we've found out more. It it's too bad because I'm gonna from here. I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna find Ruby, and she's gonna tell me something, and I'm gonna come back here, and she's gonna be gone, or she's gonna have turned into a like Cthulhu tree monster that I'm gonna have to fight or something. Who else here has a military rifle? I don't know. His friends have rifles. Maybe those psychos did it. Coalition mil military have rifles. I'm not a munitions expert. And I did not shoot him. Yeah. It's just, I feel like we have more. Maybe, maybe that's it. I don't actually have the, the information that Ruby... Like, stuff that actually exonerates Ruby yet. If I find her, I'll get it. Unless Ruby really did do it, which is a possibility. <laughs> she might have been a tad in disingenuous when she avoided talking about the bullet in his head before. Oh, look who's waking up from a thousand years of sleep. Let's get out of here. Oh. Not the window, the stairs. Uh, let's go talk to Kuno about locusts. That seems really important. And I know I still have one skill point. I think I'm going to hang on to that in case... In case something comes up. 